Hey, what's up? It's the Political Brown Kid here, and I stumbled across yet another article. This one is on the Washington Post. It was published August 28, 2024, at 5.27 p.m. Well, not the Washington Post. I'm sorry, the New York Post. It was published on the New York Post, and the article is written by Andrew Court. That's court as in if you were to go to court, C-O-U-R-T. And it's most men are invisible on dating apps. Here's how to stand out psychologist. And once again, the, what's, what's very concerning for me, and I think it's concerning for a lot of men, and we're not here to beat up on women. Trust me, I'm not here to beat up on women, but someone has to provide a balance. And obviously society, American and or Western society, feels as though it's okay to say men are toxic, men are Satan, and the sons and daughters of Hitler and whatever other um, just mass murderer was on planet Earth. And women are just such angels. And we're not trying to bash and beat up on women, but men are just frustrated and tired of the narrative that's being painted, particularly when you live in America, it's painted by the liberal media and the Democratic Party and just society that men are just these just these evil creatures and women do have done nothing wrong specifically. And I'm talking now about the dating game. It's always about what men fail to do, what men's deficiencies are as human beings. And pretty much we don't deserve to live and that women have done nothing wrong. So in this article, the individual acknowledges that men are invisible to women. And this is a psychologist, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even know the psychologist's name. It's Dr. Orion Taraban, T-A-R-A-B-A-N. And here's some of the disturbing things that he points out. Like I said, he does point out that men are invisible and that women are attracted to only a small group of men. We already know this. But it's just this narrative that continually comes up where he's going to provide some advice. And here's I'm just going to read a few of just a few paragraphs in the first paragraph. He says, I think men can dress better. They can take care of their physical fitness. For some men, it is as basic as hygiene, he stated, saying women were also drawn to presentable guys on apps. Then it says the psychologist said men should splash some cash on a couple of fashionable outfits to better attract attention and boost their confidence. We're going to come to this in a minute. By, and then this is another quote. By far, one of the best things that men can do is just spend one or two thousand bucks to get like two or three really good outfits. So you're going to spend two thousand dollars on Three outfits? That's insane. I, who would do that? This is why people are broke in America today. Who would spend to that's basically he's telling you to go out and buy some Gucci pants, some Gucci shirts or Gucci sweatsuit, basically, and then throw on some. I, I don't know. I, I don't even spend money on these expensive items, but I, I guess I hear people talk about it. I don't even know what expensive items would cost two or three thousand dollars for two or three pairs of stuff. And then he just says you can just cycle through them when you're dating. Who does this? So this is what I'm talking about. And this this person, Dr. Terban. Once again, it is all about the failure of men. They want you, they want you men to spend two to three thousand dollars on two or three outfits just so you can go out into the world and still get the same results that you're going to get. Trust me, guys, I've done this. I'm literally telling you, do not take this advice. This is horrible advice. I actually listened to a female friend of mine, um, and, and she was right. I did need some updated clothes, and the reason why I needed updated clothes was because I had actually lost 70-something pounds, and I was still walking around in the same shirts that, and, and pants that I was wearing. And she was like, you look like you're swimming in your clothes. That's the term that she used. She's from a different area. She's from the South. So that's what she was saying. I look like I'm swimming in my clothes. I'm 46. I don't know what that means. But I'm assuming I said, okay, this, this stuff looks big on me, and it needs to fit. Went out, and I bought – I spent – I spent about a maybe a thousand dollars on clothes, cologne, and shoes, and I spent about a thousand. Trust me, when I did that, that was still like I, 
I was like, where am I? This is ridiculous. This is insane to buy this many clothes and, you know, at 46 and to spend this amount of money. But I had to update my whole entire wardrobe. Now, mind you, I got more than just three items. I bought, like like I said, I picked up all three pair of shoes. I got I got a, some pants and some shirts because I do, you know, I bargain shop. But it still does not work. If a woman is, does not, today, like I said, modern women today feel as though they're entitled to having a certain man. Now, once again, let me preface this because I'm not beating up on women. Women, I want you all to hear this clearly. If you are a, a very gorgeous, very beautiful woman, like if your body's in shape, let's just say you're in shape like Kelly Rowland or, you know, you just have a nice figure, you have a nice face, you're entitled to, I shouldn't say you're entitled, let me not say that, because you may have deficiencies, other deficiencies, maybe in your character or maybe in whatever other areas of your life, maybe you're coming with baggage or so forth. But still, if you're in shape and you look extremely well, then you can more than less likely attract another individual who's built who has six pack abs, who has muscles, who's, who's very fit and he's a, a handsome man, but we're getting rejected by women that are not in shape, that look average and or below average, but they still think that they're better than regular men. And so that's, and it's not, we're beating up on these women. It's just that we're just trying to say, well, why is it that this woman who's heavy set? And she looks the way she looks and she thinks that she's better than us. And she's still, you know, striving for, you know, the top tier men. That's the only thing we're saying. So that's why I'm saying this advice that this Dr. Terabin is giving is totally false. Do not go out and spend two to three thousand dollars on an outfit on two or three outfits. Like I said, if you need to redo your entire wardrobe, two to three thousand dollars should cover your entire wardrobe not two or three outfits. And then he goes on to say this. If you're the best dressed man in the room, you get like one free point, the expert alleged. Men just need to put some clothes on and get a better haircut, but they refuse to do that for whatever reason. This is also a bunch of bull crap. Once again, this is why I'm trying to say that all of this bashing of men and just making the dating game all about men's failures it's it's really ridiculous and it's very unfortunate. And I'm trying to hold my composure because I empathize because I'm out here. Once again, like I've told y'all, for men, it is very, very frustrating because, like I said, you can get women and they'll just go out with you, whether it's a lot of women are just opportunists. They just want free food. They just want a free experience. They have no interest in you or like I said, too, and I've said this on several of my videos, I dress my best. I throw on my best colognes, have your fresh haircuts, and you can literally walk the street from sunup to sundown. No one is outside. No one. And I'm speaking. And let me rephrase that. I'm in my 40s. I'm 46. So for younger people that are in their 20s, this may not apply. But I'm letting you know when you're in your 30s and 40s and you're outside of the college scene and you're in the date, you're in the um, you're a working professional. You don't have time Monday through Friday, through Thursday night to be hanging out. And I can tell you like this Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, you do not see people. And if you do see people there, if, when you do particularly see women, they are in a group. And I'm speaking specifically for my black culture. When you see black women, they're in a group or they look like they don't want to be bothered. They look like they're not. And matter of fact, too, when I sometimes go to bars and I don't even drink, I'm not a drinker at all. And when I go to bars, like I go to a bar and hang out and watch, you know, sports games and things of that nature. I saw one female, she was sitting at the bar and I was like, man, maybe I should go approach her. And at this point in time, like I said, I'm just waiting on choosing signals. I'm tired of just cold running up on women and getting rejected. But I thought about approaching this woman and gladly I didn't because five minutes later, the person that she was waiting for came in. So that's also the problem too. When you're older, you don't know if someone is married or if they're waiting on someone coming to the bar. And so that's why I think that dating apps 
to be honest with you, they're the most efficient way to date because if you're just mindlessly roaming the streets, you're not going to find anything. Now, if you're joining like clubs, like there are various clubs that you can join for older people to, you know, meet other older people and play like particular sports. You can do hiking and do all of these, you know, they have these groups that get together and do activities. That's probably a good way to do things. But once again, too, I've joined these groups and these people really, they're not really engaged. And when I say that, like the, the women seem standoffish and then it's like, you don't know. Once again, if you're not getting choosing signals from a woman, you're not going to cold call and, you know, sell yourself to them because you don't want to get looked at as a creep and, you know, think, oh, well, he just come into these groups just to meet women. So we're waiting kind of for choosing signals. So women, you have to do some work as well. And so when this guy says that, so I agree with him that you do get style points or cool points for dressing a particular way. You do, but you only get those cool points really. And then you can get more cool points if you meet people in person, but you very rarely meet people in person. And then he's basically saying that guys aren't cutting their hair and refusing to do the work. And I can tell you that I know guys that are doing the work. It's just that the women are just, they're, they're basically, as you hear them say on the internet, my standards are my standards and I'm not lowering my standards. And obviously we don't meet their standards because when we try to talk to them, they shoot us down. So obviously we're not sexy enough. We're not handsome enough. So guys have basically pulled back. And so then he um, goes on to say, he said that the sexes have a very different communication style and men should learn how to converse on a um, woman's wavelength. So once again, it's always about a man adjusting himself to appeal to a woman. They don't ever talk about what the failures of women are in dating. Just like he gave the advice that men can get in the gym and increase their physical activity to look better and men need to get haircuts and men need to change their clothes. They can give this advice to men, but where do they say to women, you know, you need to lose weight. You need to get into the gym. Maybe your ambitions or your aspirations for a man are unrealistic because look at you, you're five, three and you're 180 pounds and you you know, need to probably look at men that are, you know, not built like Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. Maybe you need to be with a, a man that's probably in this category. When do they tell women to be a little bit more amicable and friendly? They don't give any of this advice for women. It's always about the failures of men. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because... Once again, I keep telling y'all the theme um, on my platform, when I, especially when I do these Hollywoods in black and white, it's basically showing you how society and the media controls and dictates how people think. And when you fail to, when society fails to tell women their deficiencies in the dating game, or whether it's in you know the workforce, or whether it's in whatever category you're talking about, when you fail to let women know that they have failed too, then really all you're doing is upholding their beliefs to, because they're going to say, "You see, I you know this article, I read this article, and all of the articles that I read, all of them say that men are the wrong ones." There are a lot of people that go off of what you know, quote unquote the majority thinks. And when you have media people publishing stuff like this, when you have idiots like Bill Maher, and I'll continue to call him a liberal racist because he is, when you have them using their platform to bash men in the dating game, when you have idiots like Steve Harvey, who will tell women, you don't have to do anything, you are the table. I don't even know why people use that term, the table. I hate it. It's so dumb, but it is what it is. And when you have other people, and even Tamron Hall, when she has on her show, and people just want to bash men for the failures of dating, no one wants to hold women accountable. And that just reaffirms to women to say, yes, it's the men's fault. I don't need to change. So at some point, women, it's going to take particularly, you do have, and once again, you have a lot of women like Dee Dee. Um, she's on online on YouTube. 
and that's D D D E E D E E. She's online. You have Six the Goddess. You have um, you have a whole bunch of other women. Reva TV. You have a whole bunch of other women. Melanie King. They're out there giving advice, but they're not prominent enough. It's going to take women that are prominent, like that have a platform, to come out and say, "Women, we need to do better." for other women to finally listen. It'll probably take two like women like Kamala Harris, but they're not going to bash women. They're holding firm. And once again, like I told you, the liberals will hold firm in their conviction that the narrative is it's okay for us to uplift women unconditionally. And it's now okay for us to bash men, even black men included and other non-white men. We can bash black men, Asian men, Latino men, we can bash them because they're a part of the male group and they've been holding women back. So therefore, we can bash them, whether it's in um, professional you know, development, whether it's in business, whether it's in dating and relationships, whether it's in government. We can just bash men and blame them for all of the problems of society. And I think it's very unfortunate. So once again, this is the article. Like I said, it was published in the New York Post. It was published um, on... August 28th at 527 p.m., Andrew Court, and it is Most Men Are Invisible on Dating Apps. Here's How to Stand Out, Psychologist. If you want to read it for yourself, definitely go ahead, but I think I summarized it enough so you don't have to. Once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. I'm out of here.